All right, thanks for coming, guys. Um, so we're Thundercore. I'm, my name's Ashwin. Um, I'm a core engineer at Thunder. Um, yeah, my name's Julian Trabot. I'm a engineer on the platform team. Yep, and uh, so we're gonna talk to you guys a little bit about building on Thunder and uh, how to eventually show you guys how to deploy an application. So uh, we can just get started here. So a little bit about us first. Uh, we're, we're basically a EVM compatible blockchain. Um, we, our main focus is high scalability and high throughput. Um, we were founded by uh, two professors, um, or two PhD students, a professor and a PhD student, sorry, I apologize. Uh, um, Dr. Lane Shi, and she is a uh, researcher at Cornell, and she basically wrote the first academic white paper on Bitcoin. Um, and then Chris Wong is our other, uh, other co-founder, he's currently the CEO, and he is a very experienced player in the gaming space, in the social gaming space, founded a company called Platum, um, eventually sold it for uh, sold it to Disney for half a billion dollars. Um, very familiar with gaming. Um, Elaine's very familiar with blockchain, and they ended up starting the company together. And uh, here we are. So, a little bit about the problems with existing blockchains and what Thunder sort of aims to solve here. Um, a lot of the existing public chains simply just don't provide privacy or permission options for sensitive data guarding. Um, another thing is that. Uh, as most of you know, Ethereum is very slow. It can only provide about 15 transactions per second. Um, it's very difficult to provide very robust user experiences at, at that low throughput. Um, there's also a relatively high transaction cost as there are more transactions on the actual chain itself. So it's, uh, it's very difficult to scale or build scalable applications on top of this protocol. Um, proof of work consensus also, as most of you guys probably know, requires a significant amount of energy. It's much more efficient just to have proof of stake mechanisms um, to provide both higher scalability guarantees and uh, waste less energy. Um, we also aim to provide a similar tool set to Ethereum and be compatible with all of the existing tools on Ethereum to allow you guys to build applications at a much faster rate without having to learn new technologies. So our approach to the solution is to provide high throughput. Um, we integrate directly with Ethereum, we're EVM compatible. Um, we aim to provide a very, very highly scalar and modularized architecture for you guys to build on. Um, and use proof of stake. And I can dive more into the consensus algorithm if, if you guys would like, um, but one of our co-founders will be giving a speech tomorrow um, to provide more in-depth details about that, if you guys are interested. Okay. So just a brief overview of our blockchain. Um, fundamentally, it was built to optimize, uh, optimize our transactional throughput at scale. Um, implementations today have already been completed. Our mainnet has been launched for both of our public blockchains and if you guys uh, wanted to build a private permission blockchain, that's also possible, so we, we provide implementations of both. Um, it's designed completely from the ground up um, by a team of about 30 engineers. Um, and it's about, currently, uh, we, we see transaction speeds on our mainnet about 100 times at what Ethereum is. So we can achieve about 1,000 transactions per second, and we'll show, show that off to you guys a little bit later in this, in this presentation. So the existing tool set that you guys are used to, Truffle, MetaMask, Remix, any of these tools, um, my Ether wallet are completely compatible with us. You can integrate with any of them directly. It's as simple as just changing an RPC endpoint. And we thought that the, that was, maintaining compatibility at that, uh, at that bandwidth was really essential for providing developers with an easy and flexible platform to build on top of. So it's, we'll show you guys, as we'll show you guys, it's, it's very simple to build on us and we would like to keep it that way. So the key benefits here are uh, that we're secure, we're very fast, um, we're very low cost, meaning that uh, any computationally intensive tasks that you would perform on an Ethereum-based network um, would normally cost you quite a large amount of gas. Um, on our network, our gas fees are very cheap um, because they're such high throughput. So essentially any of those applications that you build on Ethereum that would cost users a tremendous amount of money are now very cheap, and very efficient to build on, on top of us. So we would highly encourage you guys to do so. Um, fully EVM compatible, so you guys don't have to learn a new language. Solidity works just, just fine. Um, and we use uh, a variable committee size. We have a committee election algorithm that we use um, that I can also go into more detail if you guys would actually like. Um, but currently, it's a, a simple top K uh, voting algorithm. Okay, so as far as what we enable, um, any sort of microtransactions, payments, gaming forms, um, any sort of market that you would like to build, we can you can build on our blockchain with very little difficulty. Um, porting things, like I said, is very easy um, and we're highly scalable and we have many improvements in the future. Elaine is one of the top researchers in the space, if, if you guys have been keeping track of her latest research. She's been coming out with many different improvements and, uh, um, and we're 
the team is planning to continue to make improvements to the chain moving forward. So we will continue to support you guys. Cool, thanks. So we're going to show off a small demonstration so you guys would actually know how to interact with the chain. Yeah, awesome. So uh, what we're going to be deploying today uh, is uh, a CryptoKitty smart contract. Uh, as we mentioned before, I, I, what we aim to solve is uh, adding a lot more throughput to uh, to your you know to your friendly EVM compatible blockchain. Um, so uh, CryptoKitties was CryptoKitty stood out when when it first happened to us as a gaming or as a gaming focused company now uh, because of how many users it brought. It brought a lot of mass adoption uh, or brought a lot of adoption to blockchain, bringing people who weren't necessarily as technical uh, into the blockchain space. Uh, and so we, we hope to leverage that, our experience, as well as the general public's interest in gaming in order to bring a lot of people onto our chain. Um, so this contract right here, um, it's essentially an ERC-721 contract. You may have heard that before. Uh, it's a non-fungible token. Uh, every, every time a, to a kid in, AKA a token is minted, uh, it's assigned to one user, there's only one of that token. Uh, so what I'm gonna be doing today is deploying this contract uh, and I'm gonna be deploying it using a uh, service that uh, we edited called Cheshire. Uh, Cheshire was developed by Endless Nameless Labs. It's a group of people who are developing a lot and building a lot of CryptoKitties uh, solutions. And so what they wanted to do was uh, build a an, uh, development environment where you can essentially run your own local chain and uh, deploy, uh, simulate CryptoKitties on the main net. Uh, so what I did was I tweaked that to our, uh, I tweaked that to point to our test net, which our block explorer right here is pointing to as well. Um, it, yeah, that's actually the only difference we, we made. We, uh, we just changed it to point to us. And uh, what I'm gonna do here is I actually update the script as well uh, to deploy a bunch of cool kitties as opposed to just the first few. So what I'm gonna do right now is just, you're going to see it's compiling contracts. Uh, then it's going to be deploying the CryptoKitties. Now this is the point where it might take, I, I, in my experience, I had it where it was taking 10 minutes to deploy one contract. Uh, and right now, hopefully the Wi-Fi isn't too jammed with everyone. I uh, just deployed about four contracts. Um, so these are the private keys to this account. You're more than welcome to steal these if you can read it. Um, and so now that the contracts have been deployed, what happens is uh, this API puts out all the kitties that are on here and all the users that we have for this development environment. Um, you can also see right here on our Thunderscan, contract is right there. It was just deployed a few seconds ago. Uh, so we now have the contract on our testnet. Uh, and then, of course, only the one Genesis kitty. Uh, so I'm going to do, because we want more kitties, right? I'm going to run the script I have uh, that just gets these numbers as well as the first, or you know, the second hundred of the kitties that exist. You can see that they're all being passed to this address, which is my main address right now. Uh, as I go back to this API, you'll see we got another seven kitties. I think if I refresh, there should be more, eight, nine. Um, and so now we have a bunch of kitties on here. Um, but I think something, something that's interesting is that now we have this remix. Uh, it's a develop, development environment from Ethereum. Uh, and what we can do is take this address and connect to this interface right here. Make sure I'm pointing to the kitty core contract. And so we'll see here the first contract, the first uh, kitty is owned by 0xCB, the second one's owned by 0x1FCB, um, both, that I own, both ones that I own. And so we'll find, let's get the owners of these. Owner of the first one, 0xCB, 0x and over the second one, 1xfcb. Uh, so you can see I have these, I'm the owner of both of these. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to transfer uh, one of these. Uh, let's see. So what I'm going to do is grab the other address, your xcb, take it to this transfer function. I may have to reset my MetaMask account, but it should be fine. Uh, and token ID 2, which is what I'm transferring. Great, confirm. You can see right there, went through. Uh, and if I go to, where is that? Owner of, second one. It's now CRXCB, the new one. Um, you'll notice it didn't update in this API. That's because this is stored in a database. Um, but 
it is stored right there on this blockchain. You can actually view that transaction as well. Uh, so let's see, it's the hash. It's gonna be annoying. Oops, refresh the wrong one. Oh, I just lost the hash. All right, so let's pretend that I looked that up in our block explorer and it was there. Um, but yeah, this is how to connect to a ERC-721 contract on our network. Uh, you saw I just transferred, I deployed contracts in a matter of seconds, and uh, I used Remix here to transfer uh, one from one account to another account. Uh, just a very simple demo of uh, being able to deploy. And if you'll notice, if you have any experience developing on Ethereum, you'll notice that I pretty much did nothing different uh, the, uh, other than changing this RPC right here to use testnet RPC uh, thundercore.com. Um, and so if you're interested in uh, developing on Thunder, if you, and if you want to get uh, some testnet tokens, you're always welcome to do, use our fun faucet right here. And this will get you some t uh, tokens on our mainnet, and I believe. So our mainnet is live, that's, that's although we're talking about testnet or mainnet. Right, yes, our mainnet is live. I've just been doing testnet so I can just deploy. Uh, you don't want to know how many times I've killed and redeployed these kitties. Um, but yeah, does anyone have any questions or anything? So the way you did a Thunder Core, did you guys commit back to the Ethereum blockchain? No, so this is only, right now this is just stored on our own blockchain. Um, you could p potentially take that data and then go back and if you say you resolved a bunch of, executed a bunch of transactions quickly on Thunder, and then maybe save that data back on Ethereum. It's totally possible, but that would have to be something done by you. So it yeah. Have, it has to be done by the creator. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so interoperability is possible, but it's less possible, meaning that you would have to do it currently right now. We do have bridges, uh, a current bridge that has been built already, and we are in the process of building more bridges uh, to make that easier. But, yeah. but I was just thinking, like, from crypto kids, like, um, what matters what people own? Then, yeah. Sure, you can buy crypto kids super fast and doesn't work, but you, to uh, improve ownership, that's how you can do it. Exactly. Yeah, totally. And if, if you wanted to say, let's say you wanted to ma maintain the exact history of everything that had happened on Ethereum, you don't want to ditch that, you want to bring that over to Thunder, uh, what you could do is essentially, since you're going to be interacting, you most likely interact with them through the same library, or you can, um, you could essentially pull that, essentially run two connections to both blockchains, and then just essentially read all the data from each, from the first contract, and then reinsert that back into the blockchain at the cre time of the creation. Um, that's one solution in case you want to get the full history. Other questions? Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, be questions unrelated to this as well. Uh, if anyone has any curiosity about deploying the thunder. Yeah, um, I was, I've kind of missed everything you guys said, so. <laughs> Oh, you're talking about in terms of deployment? Yeah. Well, so in terms of deployment, you'll see no difference other than uh, the RPC endpoint changing. Uh, in terms of consensus protocols, it's completely different. But okay. yeah, like we're, we're our own chain and we run our own consensus algorithm. But in terms of what you'll actually do for, as it, from a developer standpoint, it's it's pretty much just an RPC point that you'll change. Uh, in terms of like, performance, uh, we do about 1,200 transactions per second. And our uh, blocks can burn about one second. Um, this is the test that this is doing about less under a second frequently. Um, and this is on our main map. You can see right now this one's going to this is a long block. Um, yeah, so you can see all the amounts of economy and actually what's the gas? Yeah, so I don't remember the exact number. It's million? pretty high though. It's about it's about 10, 10 to 50 x Ethereum. So if you have gas heavy uh, computation for smart contracts. So it's like so that would be around 60 million? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, last time I heard it was 50 million. Yeah. So you can do a lot more things. A lot more things. Yeah. And it's a lot cheaper as well. Uh, gas, the gas prices are built to target census codes, so it's a lot cheaper to win transactions. Or computation heavy smart contracts that aren't possible on Ethereum. You guys have your own token, right? Yes. It's called Thunder Token. Sorry. What's that? Can you explain about your token? 
So we have our own coin. Um, it's native to the blockchain itself. We don't actually have a ERC20 token. So, oh, no, yeah. yeah, yeah. So we have our own coin. It's essentially it uses the same way as Ethereum is on the Ethereum network. It's the base token that you would use to interoperate yeah. on the network. Yeah. You can also, for example, deploy ERC20 token contracts if you want on Thunder. If you want as well. So if one wants to transfer ETH to Thunder for Yes, there's a bridge that already exists that some guy here actually made. Um, yeah. For Thunder? For Thunder. Um, yeah, I, I haven't actually worked with it, so I can't explain it in detail. But I know it exists right now, so you guys can Is use it. Is it part of like, your project or someone else? Did? Someone else did it, yeah. Yeah, 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 so that already exists, so I think, I'm not sure exactly how it works, like I said, but it is possible to do that. Yeah. Uh, if they can figure that out for you guys. Yeah, if you're hacking on us, that'd be real cool to see. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, because I, I also built a bridge mm -hmm. for their open source projects that I've done before, so it'd be great to come there. Definitely. Yeah, we'll see it. Go for it, man. Bridge, so yeah. like, you know, like a PO, POA to PO820, uh, building on the theory. Okay. Yeah. Um, you might have mentioned already, but are you guys already on mainnet, or is it yeah, this is actually our mainnet block explorer okay. right now. I just switched over to that. Uh, what are the example dApps that are currently built on Thunder? Um, I have one on my phone right now. It's actually, so I'm a software engineer on the platform here, as I mentioned. So what, we do, what, I, what I'm supposed to be doing is uh, building apps on top. And I don't, I can't obviously cast this here, but I'll, I'll just show it to you. Uh, this is something we started releasing in, uh, in China and India. And so it's, we're waiting to start release, uh, go a little bit more in depth, uh, in the, or start promoting more in the US. Um, but I'll just kind of show right here. Um, you can see it's just a dashboard, a uh, ton of little games, this uh, slot machine, for example. Um, goal here is not really not trying to promote blockchain to get people on Thunder or to make a blockchain app. We just want to get something that's going to enticing, that's going to get people excited. Mm -hmm. So what's happening here is it's just, you know, I'm just playing slots here. But in yeah. general, you can get free tokens, you sign up. Um, you see I have my wallet right there, send, receive, QR code. Oh, one example, and so all these games are actually developed by third party developers. Um, like our goal is really to promote the games and developers. Right? So we, just kind of kind of, we just want to have a hub and want to promote developers who are not involved in the Yeah, so another, another thing that uh, we have just started or we're starting sort of this weekend is a developer incentive program. So if you guys ended up building any applications, uh, we're going to offer you guys funding to help with customer acquisition costs or any marketing costs that you guys may have or development costs. Um, so we would actually pour you guys into our hub. Um, you, would, you would be fully integrated with our wallet services, and you would have support on any of the yeah. Are you Yeah, I mean, I think it's a great idea. Uh, I don't think we're currently working on that yet. Uh, for my, at least for me, I, I'm not. Um, but something in the future maybe would be very interesting. Yeah, you, definitely. Like a possible third party. Absolutely. Yeah, it was our stuff. Great day. Great. Yeah. Cool, guys. Great yeah. job. Do you have the last question? Cool. So we have some shirts here for those who haven't stopped by our table to pick up shirts. There's some here in different sizes, and we need to do some more. Uh, and then there's a little sign up shirt there as well. I know we talked to you with them, but put in your email or comment right in front of yeah, we also have several prizes available or guys available for if you build on us. Um, for example, the best combination app that uses uh, multiple different platforms, or any of them if you decide to port OX, for example, on our platform. Um, we have a $2,000 prize for them. We have a $2,000 gaming prize for best game with the decentralized gaming application built on our platform, as well as a few more. So, yeah, we have one uh, interoperability, actually. So, something yeah. that's working with other you know, technologies here, we cool, for sure. So, yeah. Come, come talk to us if you're interested. We would be more than happy to come. Cool. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. I think I'm going to talk to you. I was wondering, because at the end of the day, you guys talk about the ability of courts, if you have the point of the smart contract, and the probability, and that we should be aware of. Um, so for the most part, it's pretty easy. Uh, I would say stick with Solidity as far as the compilation version. You're going to have to pass a compilation flag if you want to use anything above 5.0 as far as the Solidity compiler. So if you can stay uh, with any EVM compatible Solidity compiler, uh, like 0.4.25, I think is the latest, 
that we really support. But you can use the latest ones as well. But uh, some of the opcodes in there are a little still funky in my opinion. So which is the latest version? You said five two. Uh, I think the latest one is five six, but we would, we would prefer that you guys use four two five or lower. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Nice. 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 We're going to be fully open source in the next quarter, I think, is what we aim for. So uh, we're already fully permissionless as far as proof of stake mechanisms go. So we are a proof of stake blockchain, which means that you would have to have the requisite stake uh, in order to participate in the network. Um, so what that means is inherently some people think that it's closed source. I think it's still pretty open source, so we aim to have a lot of validators potentially be part of the chain. Um, as far as actual open source code, we will be fully open source in the next quarter. So you, you, you can expect to see all the code that's going to all the next quarter. Yeah, so we, we but, down, but is it going to be commissionless? Can I run a node? Yes. Yeah. You'll be able to run a full node. Okay. So yeah. You can, run, you can run a full node. Um, it's a little bit more difficult right now. So, so just so you know, we, we had a press release that went out during consensus on Tuesday, which was May 14th, where we announced the fact we had the public uh, release of our mainnet launch, and part of that will also talk about the fact that we 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 will enable full node open source, um, and we're not talking about months so away. We're talking about within a few weeks. Yeah. And we'll open notes. source and commissionless eventually. Definitely. Um, what are, how many different um, I guess stakers are there? So there's 32. 32 currently. Um, that's that's going to be open, so meaning uh, it'll be a more uh, variable number in the future. So right now it's 32 just because it was easy for us to deploy that as an initial release. And as we make many of those open source, we allow uh, external people who run validators, uh, we're going to open up that number. So how many? Thousand plus, potentially. Are there any particular use cases that you guys are looking to expand towards? Because I know you talked about gaming, but for example, one thing we're looking at is the um, actual computing, you know, multi-site computation and things like block computing. I don't know if I'm using blockchain to be able to um, validate some of the actual block computing aspects. Yeah, I mean, any of those are very interesting. Anything that, that like, for example, homomorphic operations are very expensive, or any yeah. large bitwise operations are very expensive on Ethereum. You could easily run those mm -hmm. on us, which is one of the main use cases, right? Um, when you try to think about things which differentiate us from Ethereum, I think that plus high, high transactions to put in low gas fees or, or yeah, I think you make the computation because you know Ethereum essentially like what everyone's doing like anything is they're creating their own you know side chain or you know off chain uh, yep. so I think and uh other courts we want a lot of stuff. Yep. Yeah. Right straight on chain. Yeah. And I think that really kind of encompasses what we're looking for, which is really just anything that kind of like, wasn't necessarily previously possible or anything that we're kind of enabling that wasn't you know maybe we fooled it too far before you know that's what we're really excited to see what happened. 